it's getting to be lunchtime, and uh, if a lot of you have been watching us for a little while, we have a very fun presentation with him today. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit out there. Um, it's a little bit theatrical. So stay tuned for this one. And the giveaway that Nathaniel is offering today is a free one hour lighting consultation. So that's a great offer, whether it's for you just to know a little bit more about lighting as a designer or whether you're working on a project and you could really use a little bit of extra professional help. Um, then he's, he's here to give an hour of free lighting consultation away and an awesome presentation. Okay, now I'm gonna need some interaction here, Diane, so you're gonna have to unmute yourself and Nathaniel, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, All right. Awesome, yeah. awesome, hey, awesome. Diane. <laughs> All right, we good to go? Or are we taking a little bit of a break? What should we? I'm um, I think we're ready to go, but I'm going to do just a little bit of housekeeping like we do every time we do this transition. want to make sure that anybody who's joining us might, um, is just familiar with how to use your controls. As If you're joining as attendees, then you are muted and your microphones are off and your cameras are off, but we want this to be interactive. So go ahead and make sure you know how to use the chat box. Um, we're using the Q&A. Diane Troutman, representing the NKBA, is our lovely co-host, and she's going to be fielding questions during and after the presentation. She's also going to be doing the raffle for our um, giveaway, which is that one-hour lighting consultation. I am Hannah Tiffany. I'm representing IDS, and um, IDS Seattle is the uh, Seattle chapter of the Interior Design Society, and we are so excited to be teaming up with the NKBA Puget Sound chapter for this virtual event. And we're just gonna keep rolling. All right. So it's 12 o'clock on the dot. Thanks to everybody who's joining us. And I'm gonna introduce our illustrious host, Nathaniel. Um, he is presenting today and just a little bit about him. He's passionate about getting excellent lighting into as many homes as possible. Um, when he's not doing that, he spends his time with his young family and outdoors, uh, Pacific Northwest to the core. And I mentioned this is going to be fun theatrical presentation just to give you a little sneak peek. He has a background in theater and a love of the 1990s. <laughs> Ooh, all right so if all of you can just imagine it's the 90s your tv screen this is your tv screen i don't know what you would you're just sitting back you've got a tv screen here and you close your eyes a little bit feel the 90s whatever that means for you all right all right Hannah, Diane, I'm so excited to be here to show you this amazing product that we have available. This is a product that when applied to all the objects in that product project makes sure that they come out the way you intended. Can you imagine that? This is totally amazing process. Are you ready for it? Yes. yes. Woo! Cutting edge technology, eco-friendly, short lead time, no mess. What is it? It's appropriate lighting. Yes, this is a brand new product. We are really excited to talk to you about. Um, obviously, both of you know you need lighting, but you don't just need any lighting. You need appropriate lighting, of course. So why do you need appropriate lighting? Well, let's take a look and see why. We have a modern living room. So for all you designers out there, modern living room. Hmm. Well, we have an option here. Uh, if you want to call in right now and tell us, do you think we should use recess cams or pendants in a modern living room? So all of you just call in right now. We've got all of our operators ready here to take your call and your vote. So call in right there. Oh, we're getting a lot of calls coming in. We're at 15, 16 of 40. Woo. Just a few more folks to chime in here and it's we're getting a lot of very interesting answers just to let you know you, you're gonna have your hands full with this audience keep those calls rolling in folks
Just a few more seconds, 10 more seconds to cast your votes, everybody, if you haven't already done so. And we are going to share with everyone so you guys can see how you answer this question. And there are wrong answers, so be careful. No, that was a joke. There are no wrong answers. <laughs> Ooh, 60 to 40%. 60% recessed cans, 40% pendants. Well, it's a good thing that, I, that I'm prepared here because I'm going to talk to both of you. Let's, let's, let's talk recessed cans first. So let's take a look at those recessed cans. So those of you that said recessed cans, do you use 6-inch or do you use 4-inch? Hmm. And if that weren't enough, are you going to use a PAR light bulb in there or a BR light bulb in there? Oh, man. You know, what, what's the appropriate lighting here? What about for a pendant? If it's centered in the room, what if the seating isn't centered in the room? Do you then center it on the seating? Oh, man. Or finally, 82 CRI, 90 CRI, is it worth it? I, man, how, how are we going to know what the appropriate lighting is here? Well, luckily, because of our wonderful product here, you can now know what the appropriate lighting is for these situations. Um, appropriate lighting, very easy application as well. Um, so I am going to tell you what appropriate lighting is. It's the right fixture in the right location with the right quality. It's very easy. Um, so really? right now, I'm going to give you a sneak peek into how this product, this amazing, miraculous lighting product works. So the right fixture um, is how it, it's light. So for example, a recessed can is going to give strong down light. A pendant is going to light omnidirectionally. A sconce, depending on the sconce, it might light up or down or just up or down. It might light out as well. But the real key here is you need to look at the exact fixture that you're specifying in order to know how it emits light. You're not necessarily going to see that in um, data. You're going to have to look at the fixture to see how it's going to emit light. That's going to tell you if it's appropriate or not. So not just how it emits light, but how it looks. So this is the style or the design of the fixture. Is it going to be round or square based on other shapes or if you're trying to do balance to a space? Um, what's the finish? Are you trying to match finishes? Or maybe you're contrasting with a wall or a ceiling. Looking at the, how this fixture looks is going to help tell you whether it's appropriate lighting or not. And then finally, how big it is. What's the size of the fixture? And as all of you out there know, size definitely matters, especially when it comes to lighting. Pendants. I see Diane giggling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. You got me, Nathaniel. <laughs> uh, pendants need to match the volume of the space that they're in, but also the space that they're over and that they're kind of centering. Ceiling fixtures should be proportional, kind of based on the walls that are around them. Sconces, for example, either in the number of sconces um, or the size of the sconces should be proportional kind of to the architectural elements that are around them. The fixture you're looking for, how it emits light, how it looks, and how big it is. Wow, so now we have the right fixture, but if you call now, I'm gonna add in the second secret ingredient to appropriate lighting, which is right location. So that right location, what is it? First of all, right location is, yep. does it work for its purpose? Is it for task lighting? Are they needing to do small work or need to have a lot of work um, being done underneath that light? Then it needs to be direct light onto the surface. Um, is it going to be just giving ambient light to a space so people can see? Um, it's only just there for kind of visual sake. Ultimately, does this light give light where it's needed on where you're putting it in a room? Does it work with the space? So is it at the right height? Um, does it bring focus to what's important in the space? All of these have to do with where in the room 
um, you're putting the fixture both kind of on the ceiling, kind of left, right, east, west, um, but also height. Height and where that's how that's working with everything else. And um, then finally, does this fixture work well with other light fixtures? Is it smaller than the other fixtures that need to be more of a focus? Or vice versa, does it actually need to be larger so that it's the fixture that takes most of the visual attention? Uh, maybe you want to make sure that it's matching with other pulls the room together. Maybe you're wanting to look differently than other fixtures. And so kind of putting that in a location where it can be a floor plan, where it's all one big volume, but you're wanting to make it feel like there are different spaces. So making sure that it's working with with other fixtures, working in the space, and working for its purpose. This is what right location is as far as appropriate. I've thrown in the right location to call right now, but for the first 100 callers, you're also going to receive the final secret ingredient, which is Nathaniel, I'm going to pause you just a yes. second because I'm having a little trouble with your audio and you're yep. coming in clear right now, but I wanted to let you know I might make you go back and rehash some of this. Sounds great. Totally. Excellent. But our final um, The final secret ingredient, but only if you're the first hundred callers, is right quality. Now this one gets a little tricky. What is right quality? Um, the first part of right quality is right brightness, correct brightness. Um, and that's, we kind of understand that a little bit. How bright does the light need to be? Is the light going to actually be able to give the amount of brightness that you need for the space? And obviously, depending on what you're doing, this could be a very bright direct task light. This could be a purely decorative light. These are all kind of the questions you need to think about. Make sure that you've got appropriate lighting. Next, um, and, and so for real situational experience too is, is really helpful that. Uh, CCT and CRI. Uh, most of you probably know what these are. CCT is uh, color coordinated temperature or how warm or how cool, how yellow, how blue, um, making sure that you're using the right color temperature based on what you're trying to do. Uh, warmer colors for most residential kind of a cozy atmosphere can get a little bit whiter or bluer if you're doing task lighting, um, typically not too far on the blue spectrum uh, for most interior uses. And then CRI is that color rendering index, how colors look in that white light. Um, and again, that's something where the higher the number is, the better the colors look, um, but sometimes you do have to pay a little bit more uh, to get that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that the quality of the actual light that's coming from the fixture it's going to be good. Um, and then finally, correct dimming. This one is, um, this used to be, if you remember back in the early days of LED, this was always the issue. <laughs> ah, dimming, it doesn't dim well, or it's flickering, or there's buzzing. They mostly have this figured out, but you definitely want to make sure there's no flickering, no buzzing. Sometimes that's the lamp that you put inside, actually, the light fixture. Sometimes it's the dimmer itself, uh, especially with uh, smart home stuff coming in. You have a lot of options as far as how you're controlling your thing. And you want to make sure that that control system is going to work with the lights and the lamps that you're using in the space. So correct brightness, correct CCT, correct CRI, correct dimming, all of those come in to right quality. So there you have it. That, when you put all of those together, is going to be your appropriate lighting. Um, remember, if you're the first 100 callers, you're gonna get the right fixture, the right location, and the right quality to ensure every single one of your jobs looks the best that it can. So, Hannah and Dan, thank you so much for having me on the show here. Really appreciate it. Um, it looks like there were some questions, so shoot them out at me. There'll be a lot of questions. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, can we go, can we circle back to PAR? And yep. can you talk about that first? And yeah. then we get to all the other ones. Definitely. So a PAR type lamp 
is the um, spotlight. So it's the type of lamp that kind of has a little bit of glass or a lens on the front and it's okay. going to focus the beam. And that is going to, so there's a couple of different things. You have different sizes. You have a par 20, which is smaller. That will fit in a four inch recess can, for example. Okay. Par 30, that's made to fit in a uh, five inch can. And then a par 38, which is technically what's made for a six inch can, but typically we're only using par 30s. They also have beam angles. So a spot, narrow flood, flood, maybe sometimes a wide flood. And that's going to be how wide that beam angle is. Smaller beam angle, brighter for longer, but real sharp shadows with kind of all of pars. Um, and then all the way up to wide flood, which is kind of a wide flood, but you're still getting a beam angle. A BR type lamp is the kind that kind of look a little bit like a regular A lamp but they're made for a recessed can, so they've got kind of silver or kind of screening on the sides and they screw in, um, kind of have a rounder look on the bottom. Those don't direct the beam hardly at all. They're just kind of letting it go out. It's a much softer look, but then not as bright because that light is sort of going everywhere. Um, the big difference uh, for me, obviously the sizes are gonna tell you how bright they can get, but um, PARs are gonna put a lot of light down but they're going to make some really strong, harsh shadows. Okay. Um, and that's a thing to watch out for there. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so on that same note, here's our question. Any strategies for controlling glare from recess cans in particular? So maybe that's the PAR and the BR? A, a little bit, yes. The wider the beam angle. So, so first of all, recess can is supposed to be recessed. And I can't tell you how many times I walk into a home and the light bulb or the lamp, technically it's called, is right flush with the ceiling. Um, that's not what's supposed to happen. It's actually supposed to be recessed. So you minimize that glare. Right. Sometimes that's as easy a fix as there's a, it's actually a floating socket in there. So if you take out the light bulb and the trim, there's a little wing nut that you can actually push up the socket higher into the can, tighten that in, put the light bulb back in, done. Um, some of them you can't always do that with. For pars, they do make a short neck par. So if it's a long neck in there and it's just right at the face, you can get a short neck that might do that. Um, that's the main thing for glare. But if you've got a slope ceiling, um, even if you're using slope ceiling cans, hopefully you're going to see a lot more of the reflector, which is that inside part that is reflecting a lot of the light. It's not as much glare as looking directly at the fixture. But there, especially with a white baffle, there's still a lot of what we would call a hot spot. So you have a kind of a clear ceiling, but then you still see these kind of little white circles. And that's where like a haze reflector can really reduce that amount of glare. Black does as well, but then it's black when it's off. I really prefer the haze because it kind of still disappears when the light fixture's off, but has a much better glare reduction than a uh, white baffle. Okay, got it. Thank you. I wish I had known See. that about four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want, somebody wants to, who is this? Oh, Hana. We want to know how uh, natural lighting is playing into this whole equation. Like, you know, figuring right. the mix of that with um, all so, the other layers. Honestly, when I approach any project, uh, almost all of the time, they have good daylight during the day. I mean, most of the homes around here are built fairly well, I mean, especially if it's newish at all. Everyone's like, try to get as many windows as we can. So during the day, most of the year, you're probably gonna have a good amount of light. And then, you know, you can just kind of fill in with whatever you do. Um, Cause when I do all of my plans and I'm lighting for night, when there's absolutely no kind of daylight coming in. Right. So if you light actually for night, you're always then gonna have options that you can turn on and kind of use with daylight. Um, I love daylight, I don't get to use it as often, it's typically an architectural, uh, sometimes designers get to do that. Uh, but, you know, uh, putting, if you have privacy issues, putting just a, like a gauze, a real thin, filmy um, window covering will still let in a lot of light, but has a lot more of that privacy. Um, when it comes to daylights, um, or excuse me, skylights, a lot of people putting them in bathrooms or kitchens. The problem, I, I always say, you're usually using those spaces in the evening, so don't put them in a place 
where you really need to have a light because like putting a skylight in the middle of a shower so you can't have any light in there, it feels really nice, um, <laughs> but then it's completely dark at night and there's, it, it feels like a really cheap bathroom at night. Why don't you put that skylight in the middle of the bathroom? Um, and especially if it's got a little bit taller of a ceiling, it's gonna actually then put light throughout that bathroom, not just in the shower. And you can then put the lights where you need to. Same with the kitchen. Um, though usually you're doing recessed cans often around the perimeters of the kitchen. Sometimes people think they just wanna put skylights throughout the entire kitchen. It's, you also need space for that in cadet unit for the actual electric light as well. So right. get as much daylight as you can, but here in the Pacific Northwest, 75% of the time you're in your home, you have no daylight coming in. Right, exactly. Um, do you, what else do we have here? Oh, um, especially I think in a kitchen, I was interested in knowing how you, how you maybe put the layering together when you're, when you have a person that has vision issues. Right. You know, like how do you layer enough so that they are, their needs are taken into account, but then other users, I guess. Exactly. And again, this, this whole, you know, appropriate lighting and I, seriously, those kind of three things with the three subtypes, if you just use that almost as a checklist, um, and none of this is, some of this is a little bit technical, but a lot of this is stuff that as designers, you're used to thinking about things and you can look at fixtures and know what's going to happen for the most part. Um, that can very much help. So for me is, you know, in a kitchen, the, the main part of the kitchen is to cook food usually. And so how do you, you know, where are your task surfaces? That's my number one thing that I look at in a kitchen. Where are your task surfaces? Those have to have direct light on them. So if you've got an upper cabinet, the only way you can really do the space underneath is with an under cabinet lighting. And it actually does it fantastically. Just make sure it's bright enough. A lot of those under cabinet lights are 200 lumens per foot. Uh, you need, I would say, a minimum of 350 lumens per foot, especially if they're getting older. Close to 400 lumens per foot for your LED kind of under cabinet um, lighting. And that's going to... Um, that's going to get that task lighting, recessed cans over countertops that don't have upper cabinets because that puts direct light directly down um, where you need it. Um, and then the rest of the space is kind of making it feel bright. Uh, you need, that's, that's going to put light on your task spaces, but not going to put it in, on kind of in the cabinets and as you're walking around. So that's where kind of ambient light, and that can be the recessed cans or ceiling fixtures in the middle of the space. But that doesn't actually have to be as bright as your task lighting um, because that's just a kind of C. Um, so again, recessed cans in front of cabinets or one or two ceiling fixtures that can be somewhat bright in the middle actually help it feel bright in the space. And then that allows you at least two layers of lighting to kind of mix and match and definitely dimmers. Put dimmers on those so you can adjust that. Um, does that answer that question? Yeah, and then I get, somebody else is asking, do you have a preference for a best under cabinet? Uh, I do. Light? I really like um, Northwest LED, which is actually out of Mount Vernon era, area. Um, they're importing the parts, but they're putting everything together. They're custom linear extrusions. Um, their price point is amazing, especially for custom uh, pieces. And the light quality is very, very good. And their customer service, because they're based here locally, is cannot top it. They're making local deliveries every week um, on site. And, you know, it's, Randy is the owner there. Uh, it's, it's really great. You can order them through Seattle Lighting. Um, most of the time, you're going to have to get it through a distributor. So it's going to be the contractor that needs to order that. Um, but um, Northwest LED Lighting uh, is fantastic. They've got a bunch of, under, it's their micro or their single is the under cabinet lighting that I use and they're extra bright just to make sure that you can always dim it down if it's too bright, but you want to make sure you have that bright light. Right. Um, do you have a favorite brand of switch control or dimmers? I like Lutron. Yeah. Lutron is, it's slightly more expensive than Leviton, um, but it looks nicer. It acts a lot nicer. Um, speaking of smart home type stuff, uh, their Cassetta is a hub that for like 250 bucks you can plug into your Wi-Fi and you're then buying a Cassetta dimmer, which is totally retrofitable. 
It's normal standard wiring. You can do it to a 1930s house. Just put in that dimmer and it's going to connect to that hub and you can create scenes. You can, you know, control it by your phone, but you also have a regular switch right there, a dimmer to kind of do that. So right. that's a really inexpensive way to get home lighting control. You know, it's not like a homeworks $10,000 for a one module type thing. Um, so yeah, I, I really like Lutron, but there are a lot of other options out there. I just know that they're they're going to work every single time. Yeah, stick with what you know is great. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and I think we have one more question. Have you great. used any of the new cans that have the LEDs inside the can, around the rim, reflecting the light off the dome of yeah. the can? That's a lot. I, I haven't used them. <laughs> and the reason is I don't like them in general. Um, if it's a basement rec room, you've got HVAC. And because the, the reason that contractors really push to use them is they're very, very cheap. Um, it's because they're very, very cheap um, and they're shallow. So they don't have a lot of them don't even need a junction box. Um, it's really easy to install. Saves them time. They're always going to go for easier which is fine. From a lighting perspective, the quality of, you just need to be aware of the quality of light that they give. Um, they're not going to be recessed very much, not like a traditional recessed can, so you're going to get a lot more glare because that entire surface is going to be lit. Some of them are going to have like a special coating or a screen on them that makes it so there's not as much glare. That's going to be a positive. Um, also, and those, some of them are recessed. Some of them are actually not recessed. Some of them are actually surface mount. Um, and those surface mount ones, and, and even a little bit the kinds that are recessed just a little bit, they're not going to put out light like a PAR. They're not going to have a, a spotlight beam. And it's, it's going to be a little bit more like a BR, um, especially the surface mounted ones. It's not even going to be like a BR. It's almost going to be like a surface mounted fixture. It's going to be a very, very wide distribution. So because they're spreading that light around everywhere, they're not as bright as maybe it seems like they might be. So you just kind of, whether it's appropriate or not, is gonna be how much light are you needing? How is that gonna look? And just know that all of those are gonna have a, a higher amount of glare because of kind of how they're doing the lighting. Okay. Um, I'm gonna jump in here. I think the, uh, the question was about, and I haven't heard of this, this is new to me, a domed can where the LED reflects light off the dome and you don't see the LED source. Oh, yes. So that's decorative for the okay. most part. Um, what you're doing is there, it's, think of a cup and then you're putting LEDs in the bottom, an upside down cup and you're putting LEDs in the bottom of the cup but the LEDs are shining up. So it just lights the inside. It's, it's indirect lighting. You're shining the inside and then that's what actually comes out. But because you're reflecting it off of a surface and not putting direct light out, it's not nearly as bright. So it's almost a little bit more of a very soft kind of glow. If you're familiar with cove lighting, things like that, um, it's a really cool effect. It looks nice, but it's a little bit more of an ambient glow. In, and depending on where it's at, not even really enough for kind of general ambient light. You, you need to have something else to have it feel comfortable in the space. Now, I'm not sure exact one they might be referring to, um, but I just know the physics of it. You're gonna have to get that pretty bright in order to have a lot of light coming out. Now, a lot, some of them will have like patterns um, on the inside that look really cool, but that's a decorative fixture, not necessarily something that's gonna be putting light out. So don't put it in a space where you actually need to have light coming out of it. Perfect. Well, Di, we are coming up on our transition time, and I think that um, thank you everyone for attending. And I think after yeah, this, thank you, definitely pretty pretty clear the value of a one hour lighting consultation. And Miss okay. Diane is totally ready to do this drawing. Oh yeah, I'm I'm all about spinning the wheel. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I have to hold it up here to prove that I'm doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> we believe you, but you know. Yeah, yeah. It's so much more dramatic, right? <laughs> Thank you, Vanna. Okay, Kennedy. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Okay, Paula, are you still here? Oh, I saw, I see a raised hand. Okay. Nice. 
Excellent. Looking forward to it, Paula. Paula, Paula. All right, Nathaniel, thank you so much for- Yeah, thank you, Nathaniel. This could go way longer if we- <laughs> <laughs> We've got a great one coming up next, so everyone stick around. <laughs>